Hello everyone, welcome to the episode review. First of all, if you're wondering how we watch these episodes, it is with a VPN. I'm saying this because I always get comments, how do you watch the episodes? Go to the Coro Coro YouTube channel, C-O-R-O, C-O-R-O. Get a VPN, if you know what a VPN is, search it up. Once you get a VPN, set the country to Japan, and then go to the Coro Coro YouTube channel. Should be able to find the episode, go watch it. There's obviously no subtitles. Uh, please support the official release. If there's something that's not official, and someone's put it in the comments, I might delete or ban the person. So please, please, please. Uh, with that being said, let's get started. So the titles, no spoilers. What I will say is this, if you are a fan of Shu Kuranai or Spriggan, uh, this episode is most certainly for you. I very much enjoyed this episode. I thought they were gonna go through a dumb route and they didn't. Uh, this episode starts off with Shu approaching Lane. And you gotta love how it's such a big event when literally everybody just comes to watch. Well, okay, not everybody, but you know what I mean. Like, but there's like so many people there just uh, watching the match. So I believe Lane taunts him or something. So he's like, oh, hi, you evolved your bay just so you could face me. And Lane's like, I guess just taunting him saying, oh, that won't be enough. And then after, I believe Lane is describing World Spriggan, double chassis and everything. Uh, and the blockers or whatever that's on Spriggan. So it is cool. And we do get this little uh, sequence, which is basically, it was okay. So we got the sequence that was going through all the scenes that we saw with Shu and Lane, a little flashback. So they're ready to face off. Now Shu's launch is really cool. I don't know how different this is from Cho Z, but he basically gets his launcher, kind of prepares it on the back. He then after gets a little leap up, then uh, moves forward and launches his bay and you know that's a cool launch that's a cool launch most of the launches uh for the returning bladers aren't really modified maybe just slightly different or just reused uh, from the previous seasons lane launches lucifer goes so here's the interesting thing so spriggan has world spin do we remember when they were building up to this scene uh, when vault was going up against Shu? So World Spin with the double chassis is actually countering Lane's barrier, which I thought that was so cool that they managed to like do that. And it really does get you this sort of like feeling that like Lane did learn from Shu. He was Shu's student. So to see Shu sort of like push back, it's so interesting because obviously IRL, you know, bays aren't gonna perform the way that the anime might depict them. But the seed actually, in the anime, where they able to get really creative, this is definitely one of those moments we got to appreciate. They are both clashing head on, Lane and Shu. So this is really exciting. So then after at the end, it was both the base stopped spinning. Now at first I thought, okay, it's Spriggan. Uh, apparently it was a draw or whatever. I'm not, I'm like, I'm kind of paying attention. I'm kind of not, I'm just, I'm, I'm just still in awe on how cool the battle is. Like this, uh, this battle is not like one of those things where the animation along with the art is on point. It's just like, you know, it's a decent for a Beyblade episode, but the actual CGI battle I think is what's most interesting, which again, like I said, we gotta appreciate. And then after Lane basically rages, it's like, oh no, a draw, no, I'm gonna break you. <laughs> what, what is it with Lane, man? What is it with Lane? Dude, Lane really does remind me of Jiren. He just is obsessed with power, man. Oh, it's just about winning. Strength is absolute. Duh. And then after the, at the end of the season, he's gonna realize, oh wow, I, I was wrong. Yeah, but dude, like, Shu feels bad for Lane because, you know, it is his student. And I do like these moments that uh, he has uh, with Fault. Because Fault feels bad for Shu because Shu wants to save Lane. And Shu's worried for Lane because Lane is obsessed with this flare and it's consuming him. He only cares about strength. He only cares about being number one. He doesn't care about anything else. So that's why we sort of see it built up to, although kinda kinda could have been done. Maybe they kind of I don't know, they could have done a little bit better, at least for the anime, but it is building up. He basically take down, he takes down free. That's why Free wanted to make Mirage Fafnir in the anime. He has first Uranus, and then after evolves right into Lucifer after he beat Free. He then after invades the battle against Louis. 
and he's like on a rant. He really is just on a rampage. So that is the idea. And you get these cool moments where Bolt looks back at Shun and he's like, it's just, it, dude, this episode is like so cool, especially considering that Sparking is such a short season. It's like 26 episodes uh, for how the format works for the thing. But, you know, it's good to have these moments. So Spring switches to left in attack mode. I believe the previous round he was in free spin, so defense, and now he's in attack where the blade is fixed. If I'm wrong in that, you can correct me in the comments, as the comments kill me if I make a mistake in the episode. So I believe Spriggan has Counter Break, World Spin, and World Slash. So yeah, he's going up against Lucifer, and he's really pushing against it. Like, Shu is... Shu's been the most successful uh, blader to ever go up against Lane. I would now have to say that third place is Iga. Second place is Bolt, or Iger. Second place is Vault and first is Shu, because Shu is actually just sort of, he's really dominating the match. And that's when Lane flares up and he activates Variant Wall. And dude, Spriggan, Spriggan finally does the thing which everyone's been talking about, which is why haven't Baze just went up in the air and then after dive down? So he basically does a Star Blast attack like Pegasus does. And dude, Spriggan's avatar is so sick. It is so sick. I gotta take you like, it's half. Oh, it looks so cool. It looks so cool. Like, it, it really does look like a beast, man. That avatar is sick. I don't care what anyone says. So Spriggan then after dives down. And the world vertical. Well, technically speaking, okay, first of all, it, it's, just, it's just world slash, right? So first of all, I did do a video on this, which I'm going to leave a card or an end screen for. But... He basically kind of goes into just to like the like a vertical hit because he basically hits the blade uh, upside down, and that causes uh, Lucifer's barrier to break in half. Although it, the one thing I don't really get, and this is not really like a fault of the anime, but you know how like the rubber blades IRL, you know, once you use it a lot in battles, they kind of just get worn and they break off. Why did why didn't the anime just like build up with that? Like, that would have been really smart because they basically have this thing where it's talked about for the product, but it's not really like in the end. Like, how cool would it have been if throughout all the battles that Lane would do, slowly his barrier, the weaker his barrier got, the more worn the blades would get, and maybe when, it, when Spring did that hit, he would break off one of the blades. I don't know, I thought it'd be cool. You can tell me in the comments if maybe that would have been not as cool as what they already did or whatever. Lane flares up again, he does Variant Disaster, but unfortunately to Lane, Shu actually has a stopper on World Spriggan. Which I think that's probably, for the anime, is probably the most OP ability. So Variant Disaster just can't do anything. It, uh... It cannot. Dude, he, he just, he just, he just counter, counter, counter break. <laughs> You're nothing to me, kid. <laughs> oh yeah, dude, Lane gets, yo, he, this is like the most satisfying thing to see him lose so badly. Dude, Lucifer lost the burst. So, this is like similar to the manga. So, in the manga, okay, I need to explain this. People understand. One, I can't show the core core because of the copyright reasons, but I can explain it at least. The manga has its own continuity and so does the anime. So just because one thing happens in the manga does not mean the anime is going to do it. But it, 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 it loosely follows it, right? It loosely follows it. So, what do you think Lane's reaction is when Shu offers him his hand and he says, you know, Lane, you did a good job in that battle. Yo, he's mad. Now, my theory is this. I think that Lucifer, first of all, we already, we already got the confirmation. But yeah, this is definitely Lane's motivation to evolve Lucifer. I think this season's going to be sort of where the twins need to get stronger and they're going to be working with the legends, surpassing them, and they're going to have to take down Lane, and Shu wants to help Lane. So they want to take down Lane, but Shu also wants to help Lane. You get the idea. And Shu's, Shu's, uh, Shu's, Shu's upset, rightfully so, that uh, couldn't help him. Uh, next episode seems to be a training session. Uh, I believe it's is it a four-way battle. I see Brave, Spriggan, Hyperion, and Helios. It occurred me if I'm wrong. I do not, but no, never mind. No, it's there. Never mind. All right. Okay. No, we're good. We're good. All right. Uh, no, uh, what was I going to say? Here. It looks like they're trying to sort of just help them train doing the limit break thing. 
So as far as that goes, that's kind of it. Uh, I enjoyed this episode quite. This is like a, a good episode. The reason why it's a good episode, and I'll say this, I do not agree overall with how they've been setting up Lane and just defeating all these legends, but I think when you have all that build up just for him to lose to like the person who trained him, it kind of in a way just feels very satisfying because they're leading up to this point where he's defeated like basically all the good legendary bladers, right? And Shu stops him. Which technically, by the way, if you want to do power scaling, that would technically mean that Shu, even though, okay, well, it's not a, technically Lane is the, the strongest blader in Sparking, at least through rankings, since this is not like an official match, but, you know, Shu is technically speaking as well. He is the strongest uh, legendary blader. Not like in rankings or whatever the anime has, but, you know, he is the strongest. So let me know your thoughts on the episode. This was solid. This was solid. I know a lot of people don't really like Lane, and, you know, it's fine. I, I'm kind of like torn between him. I feel like he's a decent antagonist. Not like the best that Burst could he offer, but he's okay. Anyways, if you're wondering about news and information, the following week, which is next week, I believe the following weekend is when the Limit Break DX set comes out. Yeah, 14th. Well, a week and a day technically for when I'm launching this. We'll probably get some information here and there that's going to be sprinkled out. But uh, dude, I'm excited for these Limit Break Bays and everything. Anyways, bye.